Miami Dolphin fan, let me ask you something. Do you love the Dolphins? Do you think they are the greatest football team? How about the greatest show on surf? If you answered yes to any or all of these questions, then fins up and surfs up to the greatest show on surf dot shop today. Celebrate the most explosive offense in the NFL with this awesome exclusive merch. From jackets, hats, shirts, and more, they have it all. Use promo code FINSTALK and save 15% on your order. Show off your fandom. Don't wait. Go to the greatest show on surf dot shop today. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. We take the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever seen. We're in the air, we're on the ground, we're always in control. And when you say Miami, you're talking Super Bowl, cause we're the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number one. Yes, we're the Miami Dolphins. Good Dolphins fans. Welcome to another episode of the best or positive Dolphins show <laughs> Good evening, Dolphin fans. We're back. Welcome to another episode of the Finn's Bandwagon. I'm your host, Finn Stanza. With always with me is my co-host, Fish Tank Hank. Hank, how you doing, Pops? Got it backwards. I'm the host. You're the co-host. Oh, I said my co- okay. Go here, here. <laughs> you want to be Finn Stanza for today? Go ahead. You can be Finn Stanza for today. Bam! There you go. There we well, go. today we're going to be talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm a little incognito tonight. I don't have that bright light in my face today. Oh, for me, I never have the bright light. That horrible lighting in this. I'm one of those people who's never truly invested in that long-term lighting. Buying LEDs, all that. Every time I bought an LED, I buy the wrong LED and the white, and it it hurts my head and it gives my wife a headache. So I go stick with the old stuff, stick with the old stuff, and that's what I stick with. Yeah. Unless someone does it for me, it makes it look nice. I don't trust myself with all that weird lighting. Very confusing well, for me. Well, my wife got me one, right? Yeah. And it changes colors. It goes to uh, like a a sunset color. Yeah. So it's not so glaring if you don't want it to be. Yeah. Anyway, everyone, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. What the heck? What just happened with my banners? I have to hide those banners. Hold on one second. Where are those <laughs> weird banners? Hide those banners. There we go. That's much better. Um, thank everyone for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out Caneswear, the greatest show on surf.shop to, to get all your dolphins needs and all the stuff about Miami Dolphins. So this has been a bit of a quieter week, Hank, for the Miami Dolphins. However, we have signed officially every single player that was announced was going to be with the team. So that last one today with Braxton Berrios, um, reasonable contract, $3 million. Uh, we'll go over the different positions as we go. But obviously, the big news of the day that Barry Jackson reported that you and I haven't had a chance to talk about was that last night uh, there was mutual interest between OBJ and the Miami Dolphins. Um, uh, to to meet up and consider each other, and then today, then we found out late last night that he was coming for a visit, and then we heard he was there for a visit, and then we heard that he left without a contract, which could be it may be up to price. So, first question before we get to the end result and what we think might happen: When you heard the name OBJ, what's the first thing we did that, that, that excite you? What was your reaction? Being on the positive bandwagon that you are, what was your initial reaction? If he comes to the team, I'll accept him. But he, I much rather have uh, someone out of the draft. Okay, okay. That that's my opinion. Rather than him, I know a starter for the in the fourth, fifth round. His name's Luke McCaffrey, and he'll be a starter when he comes comes into the league. Any relation? He, yes, <laughs> his brother. <laughs> Of course, it's, it's his brother, I'm assuming. Yeah, and, and let me tell you, I've watched tape on the guy. Yeah. He he plays just like his brother. And yeah. I'm telling you, this kid's going to come in. He's going to be ready to suit up and hit the field right That's away. Great. So him as a third wide receiver option, he's 6'1". I don't see it as a bad thing. 
I I would see that as just fine. So that that's how I feel about it. You know, OBJ's had his time in the limelight. If he wants ten million plus, he's not going to get it from Miami. Miami won't pay that much. But if he wants ten million plus, you can always get a rookie on a nice friendly deal. So that's how I see yeah. it. So for me, I, I look at this from twofold. So let's think about it from the OBJ perspective. All right. One, you're coming to a place where the weather is phenomenal. Yes. The life of being to live a life in Miami for a guy of his age and personality is perfect. It's as similar to a Tyreek Hill. Uh, your ta- like I said, it's no state taxes. The camaraderie of the star power. He played with Jalen Ramsey when they were when they won a Super Bowl. Even though he and he was phenomenal then until he got injured. Tyreek is here. Big big names are here to be with him. So that's a positive for OBJ. From the Dolphins' perspective, I, I look at it twofold. I see it as a, a good option because if Waddle and Hill are not there, you have an experienced veteran who was phenomenal for the Rams, as I just said, and when he needed to be. Last year, he did make he was he was he was like a he was sort of the third wide receiver for the Ravens, and he was there when he had to be. Um, yeah. I like the name and the reason why. Okay, so I'm sort of torn on this one. If they sign him, I'll be excited. If they don't sign him, I will be I will be okay, but I'll be annoyed only because the Miami Dolphins have become a bit of a, con- a confusion for me. And I'm going to use your as an, and then you'll talk after I say all this. They remind me like a, like driving your Corvette, but not knowing how to. You, they don't. Have, they want to buy that Corvette but they don't know how to drive it. So what ends up happening is that they went all in last year, but injuries happened, but they didn't go all in at all positions. The running game wasn't at all in. The offensive line wasn't all in. The There was areas that were just missing, and wide receivers were not deep enough. It all, all, all told, it turned out that all wide receivers wasn't a deep enough uh, class. And now this year, you have this opportunity where you're able to sort of get rid of all these players, you still have some cap issues in the future, but you can go all in again where you need to make that big splash because that's what Chris Beer does. My big splash would have been Derrick Henry, but now you're interested in getting OBJ because it's a name. And I think it's too, the Dolphins are a little confusing because I think they want to be in the limelight. They want to be the stars. That's why they went on hard knocks last year. That's what they want to be on NFL Live. They want to be talked about every single day. They want to have the controversy. They want to have the big names. But then if that's the case, then he should never have left the building today. Because if you truly wanted him, go. you have the money, go spend it. I If they go sign to a one-year $10 million, I won't be pissed only because of the fact that they are truly trying to say, we want that third veteran wide receiver to complement those three. We can still go draft one. Then we still have Craig Craft, Easy E. We can put them on special teams. Barrios could be purely special teams. They're not expensive contracts. So my confusion with the Dolphins right now is – why even have it out there that you're interested in him unless you're just doing it for the social media fodder? Because if you really wanted him, he should never have left the building. So tell me what your thoughts are on that. I'm a little confused. Okay. First, let me ask you a question. What is your dream vehicle? Hummer, what? Just I, It doesn't matter to me what it is. My dream vehicle? It could be uh, just a pickup truck. I don't care. No, I don't. It I, it's hard because I don't really. I've never been that person who says I have to have that car. I'm a big guy, so getting into it, and I don't. My dream car, probably what you're driving. I drive a vet. I would probably drive a vet. Like I would love to just. Okay. There was this okay. movie back in the day. There was this movie back in the day with Joe Pesci. Okay. Yeah. It was called The Super. Go look it up. His okay. father is a slumlord. In New York City, it's a, co- a comedy. He gives his son, when he turns 30, his first building. Tell yes. him you're not allowed to make any changes to the building. Just collect the rent. He co- he shows up in Harlem in a in a red Corvette. Someone, someone actually comes after him. He has to live in the building. His red Corvette gets destroyed that day. It, it, but that court, when I first saw that red Corvette, I go, that's what I want. I want that okay. red bed. Okay. okay. So... You you go to a Corvette dealer and you see that red Corvette. Yeah. Now, are you just going to pay them whatever they want? Of course not. 
Of course not. You're going to negotiate and talk. Well, that's the same thing they did with OBJ. That's the same thing they probably did if they if they vent, vetted uh, uh, Henry or not. I don't know personally, but I'm just saying if if they wanted those people and if they came to terms, then that would have been. And for me, I'm all right either way. Just because he left the building doesn't mean it's hands washed already. However, I don't think Miami's going to be offering him more than five, you know, more than six to seven million dollars. There's two things I do. One, I give him one year max eight million with a potential. He already said he wants a multi year deal. No, let me hear. One year, eight million with the possibility of getting to 10. Or two years, thirteen million, uh, twelve million, with the potential to get to fifteen, something like that, with incentive. Yeah, that's it, in the six. He has to have an incentive laden contract to motivate him not to just be a passenger on this team. For me, uh, if, uh, this is a Mike McDaniel thing. This is purely a Mike McDaniel that he wants another star to throw to. The reason I like OBJ is because if it matters to him in big games. He will show up for you. He was such he was stuck in mediocrity when he was with the Giants. And that but now he just wants to be part of the team. He didn't cause problems in Baltimore last year. He didn't cause problems when he was with McVeigh and the Rams. So I think he'd be a complimentary piece. What because for me, Tyler Boyd's gonna cost you too much money and you're gonna have to agree to him long term. Um Hunter Renfro doesn't prove anything to me. So either go get a some a veteran like OBJ. Or J.K. Uh, for me, I go get OG. I'm happy to go get OBJ and J.K. Dobbins. Uh, let's see what everyone else has to say. What's up, Steve? At least Steve showed up. Thirsty won't show up tonight. He's going to be uh, at the Panthers game with his son, even though he knows nothing about hockey. He should have called me. I would have taught him a little bit of the thing about hockey. Uh, but don't forget to check out Steve Malloy on Real Talk Fence Talk every Tuesday. I hope he was a little more positive this past week. Um, having good, good to see Kim. Wants to see Kim and not OBJ. <laughs> Honestly, we between I think that's why we brought back Barrios for for or Alex Earl. I think that's why we brought in uh, Jordan Poyer for Rachel Bush, and now we want to bring in Kim Kardashian. But may, maybe they're right. Um, I would love to have OBJ. By the way, isn't that funny, Hank? That every single What's time that? we bring in a player, the first thing people look at is who who's the who's the girl da- who's the guy dating. So OBJ. <laughs> Is with potentially with Kim Kardashian right now. Uh, who he doesn't need the money, she's the billionaire. Um, then you have uh, uh Rachel <laughs> Bush, she the wife, but that's why, think, well, that's why uh, Josh Poyer didn't take a lot, jo- didn't take a lot of money because R- uh, Rachel Bush is doing very well for herself as an influencer, and Braxton Barrios didn't have to take a lot of money because but all these three they know where their bread is buttered, they're going to the woman to collect for them, that's where they're going, they're not coming here for anything, so. It's very funny. Oh, it's man. So funny. Don't strike them down like that. I'm I not. Mean, but the boy, the men, I'm telling you. No, but honestly, I like the name of OBJ only because it, Mike McDaniel yeah. likes stars. He likes to be in the know. He, he wants to be courtside at a Miami Heat game. He well, wants let to me, be. Let me interrupt you. I want to say right. fins up to everybody out there. I already I did see while you were folks. Gone. I see you folks talking, and I want to thank you all for t- tuning in to us tonight. If you want near the end, we could drop the link, and everyone can say hi. Whoever wants to come on and ask us some questions, yeah, we'll, well, drop the wanna, we'll drop the link. We'll drop. Want to say hi to everybody? Yeah, we'll drop the link. Everyone can say hi. Um, so overall, if you had to make a prediction, will OBJ be a Miami Dolphin? Yes or no? Only if he takes around six, seven million. That wasn't what I asked. <laughs> Will he be one? Well, I don't think he will be because he's going to want he's going to want more than Miami's going to want to pay, and Miami's going to only going to bring him in on a friendly deal. Like I said, there's too well, many I other mean, ways for Miami to get a number three, a number three wide receiver. We still have the draft. We still have um, free agency again because, you know, people are going to get cut. So there, there's but, plenty of number threes out there is my point. Okay. Oh, to be, I don't think they will, but then I think it will be a mistake. Why? Because he's a better version of Cedric Wilson, 
And he's the one player, unlike Waddle, unlike Hill, and unlike all the other short wide receivers who, who we like to call – is it Steve Malloy who likes to call them Oompa Loompas? Or do, I call them Oompa Loompas. <laughs> Oompa Loompa Doompa. Okay. OBJ, you throw that ball. Remember that game against the Ravens? There was one catch I remember, and it was OBJ's on the sideline. He still has the ability to go get that ball. If Tua throws that ball and it's up for grabs, of all, if I had a choice between Hill, Waddle, or OBJ, even at OBJ at 31, to go get that ball and height up top, I'm, I'm asking OBJ to go get that ball. I'm not asking. First, the first off, 31's not that old. No, it's not. I mean, look how long Jerry Rice played. Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. It, it's really not that old. However, no. he's not the same player he was either. I no. mean, he 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 can't do everything he used to do. But like you said, you want you want some hands to catch the ball. He's your man. Yeah. No, he's your I, man. I want to draft Luke McCaffrey the same way you do, but you still can and bring in OBJ. It doesn't stop you. It, you can cut River Craycraft. You can cut play. You can you can cut easy. There's a lot of things you could do with players during camp. The same they brought in a lot of bodies during the the during um, during training camp that ended up not making the team. Robbie chosen OBJ will be a starter. That's the difference. He's a guaranteed starter. So. For me, in the end, I think they should bring him in. In long, I just think they should because they need that. I think they just need to have that name and that splash. But I think in the end, the fact that he left, it's going to become a monetary thing. But I don't think that should stop them either. But I don't obviously don't want to overpay him either. I just think he fits. I just think he thinks the personality of Mike McDaniel. So if I'm Mike McDaniel, I will tell Chris Greer, I want him. Bring him in. I need him. Let's go. I agree um, with Steve. Steve says, you know, I believe we need to draft a wide receiver to replace Tyreek Hill in the next year or beyond. Well, for sure. I totally agree. <clears throat> and, you know, you can you have to make one of two decisions, though. They either have to go with speed, like with Tyreek Hill, or they're going to have to go with a big body. Either way, you're not going to fully replace Tyreek Hill. That's why you get a McCaffrey this draft, and then you get the, your Tyreek Hill the following year. Yeah, I understand. I, I don't disagree with you on that. Um, overall, right now in the wide receiver room, you have Hill, you have Waddle, you have Easy e you have Craycraft, you have Berrios, uh, who else do you have? I think that those are your core. You that was it. it. You have, you know, there's a few more there, but like nothing. There's no third wide receiver. I right now we do not have a third. We do not have a fourth. We have a fifth and a sixth, and maybe a seventh. That is a problem. We are yeah. not. De there's no depth at wide receiver. I'm actually more concerned about the wide receiver position than I am on the offensive line. I really am because. Mike McDaniel, Freddie Swain, very funny. Mike McDaniel likes to go to Tyree Kill and Waddle, and that's about it. If you don't give him another weapon, we're going to be in trouble, and we need to spread the ball around at the wide receiver position. Hank, why was the why, you know wonder why Joe Burrow was so successful for those years? Why he had three capable wide receivers. So yeah. did and so did, and when they won the Super Bowl, they had OBJ. They had what's his name? Uh, God, it's going to come to me. Uh, Al, no, uh, what's his? Oh, yeah, uh, well, Rob, there was not Robert. There was Robert Woods, but there was the other guy. Uh, it's going to come back to me. They had three wide receivers who were capable, involved in the game. Higgins? No, I'm talking uh, the Rams when they won. They had oh, OBJ. The they had Cup, and they had a third guy, Allen Ro Allen Robinson. Okay, they had three guys who are capable of making plays. The Miami Dolphins are very weak at wide receiver right now, even with Waddle and Hill. And that is yeah. very, very concerning to me. So I want them to go get a good third weapon who's a veteran player, who's played in this league, who if Tyree Kill has a bum ankle, you don't have to force him back into the game. Let him go rehydrate and let him – we'll see you next week. I don't need to worry about Tyree Kill getting injured 
and being injured for most of the season because of it. So that's my perspective. What's up, Scotty? Um, so that's the wide receiver core, um, including Barrios. Um, how do you feel uh, with Barrios coming back as your main special teams return guy? Bother you? Like, how do you feel about special teams? Saran Neal, I think, is a great pickup. He's an ace. You have Elijah Campbell, but you're coming back with Jake Bailey. We're Danny Crossman's back. Jason Sanders is back. Barrios is back. So the only the only change really is adding that ace and Saran Neal. Like, what are your thoughts currently on the special teams? Do you feel are you concerned about it again? Yeah, you know, I I was concerned a little bit about it last year, and you know, now that they've done pretty much nothing, I'm a little more concerned. Saran Neal, Saran Neal makes make a difference. He's a capable special teamer. Yeah, he's a star in special teams relative to everybody else. Yeah, I you know. But one guy, they needed a little bit more. I think they should have did a little more uh, of their homework. So, but like you said, you know, you get add one great player to it, it makes a difference. The only people I can think of that I would want would be like Anthony Gould. Yeah, he's a wide receiver. Pick him up at like two forty one or something, or get him after he's an unre- uh, undrafted free yeah. agent or something. He'll fall somewhere in there. So. Okay. You, you know, and he's a special teams wide receiver guy, and you want someone to play slot, he definitely plays slot. There's no problem yeah. with that. Okay. Um, on the secondary position, how do you feel about the current secondary? And would you get your third safety by going to invest in a Justin Simmons type, or do you want to draft him and have like a Cameron Kitchens type of player? Well, they haven't they haven't really made their big splash. Like you said, they haven't really gone after. Anybody yeah, so which yet. one would you prefer? I, I would prefer personally that they get Justin Simmons. I wish okay. they, they would have already gotten it. So you wouldn't draft anybody. You'd go get that third safety. I would go get them if I could. Okay. But if I can't, I, I wouldn't have a problem drafting somebody. Okay. I agree with you. I believe that they need to go get a third safety because yep. last year, because we could play a three safety set, and I would really like to have that player sitting there. I'd go get him, especially with the fact. So good for me at the at the cornerback position. I think we're set because you have Kohu, you have Needham, you have Smith, you have a Fuller. Um, you can move. You have Ethan Bonner. You have Elijah Campbell can play there. Need, we can move people around, but they. I think they need that third safety. To I really. I, Solidify us. I agree with you, Scotty. I like uh six seventh round. I like like uh, um Josh Proctor. Okay. He's a safety. Yeah. Pick him up maybe in the later rounds or something, you know. That would be the only thing I would say. Yeah, I by the way, I think X will wait because I think X X is out to lunch. He could have gotten the 15 million a year for one season, restructure his contract with the Dolphins. He ain't gonna get nearly what he wanted. And, let, and they're not going to do it. Yeah, I hammered to see. Everyone agrees. See, this is why I ask these positive questions. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about the linebackers right now? Um, right now, I'm ecstatic about David Long. I love, uh, I love Brooks. Um, the, the the other positions I think we'll fill in as we need. The one area which I'm concerned about, and what I'm actually I would cut him. Um, but I think they're going to keep him for special teams, and I would actually go draft somebody to play there uh, at a lower contract because I don't think the guy can do anything in coverage. I don't think he, and I don't think he fits our scheme. I cut Duke Riley because Duke Riley is two and a half million on the cap. If you cut, sorry, you could save two and a half million dollars on the cap if you cut Duke Riley, and it won't cost you anything else. So, what are your thoughts on the linebacker position and? Are you looking to still add a veteran or you want to go straight draft? My opinion is uh, they need to add it one way or the other. Whether no, but it what is... do you prefer for that position for the structure of this football team? Well, I, I think they've Rotational already veteran gone or out. Development? They've gone out and got two linebackers already. I mean, so Anthony Walker know, and yeah. who's left that 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 you would want. Evan, who's left that you would want? Coming off the top of my head, not much. Exactly. The linebacker so, free agency. It's going to have to be through the draft. The problem is, is that you can't <laughs> promise yourself. 
the, unless, <laughs> but honestly, that. But I have a feeling if you're going to do that, you might need to go early in the draft. And but the problem is, it's not that deep. Like there, there's a lot of edge rushers, but basically the only linebacker people think about is Jeremiah Trotter. Uh, but that's about it. And there's, it's not a deep I linebacker like draft. Huh? I like Trotter. I Let but me that, tell you, I would deep, love to have him draft. on our team. And the one thing we haven't been able to develop on our team are our linebackers. Look at poor Channing Tindall, right? So, yeah, um, I, I would. I mean, Trotter's going to be what a third, fourth round pickup, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I would love it if Miami was to trade back and get something going there. That yeah, wouldn't bother sure. me one bit. Okay. Now, defensive line. Defensive line for me, I like. I like it. From the perspective that to have, I like the rotational aspect of it. Every player there is going to be fighting tooth and nail to earn that position at camp. You have your stud in Zach Sealer. You have your experience in Shaq Barrett, who's won two Super Bowls, who is the perfect fit to go along with Chubb and Phillips. Because I have a prediction that the, the those two players, it, we're, we're going to see both those players in the month of September. We're not going to have to wait to October for either one. So I think that the edge rusher position, I would go draft a fourth one. If you can, either in sweat or someone to that effect, if you can. And I think Mike McDaniel, he loves his edge rushers from that perspective. He even said that last year, that if he had his first round pick for the first time, he'd probably take an edge rusher if he could. Um, but I like what they're trying to do there because I like because, because that's what they did in Baltimore. I guarantee you, outside of Ray, Rayquan Smith and Kyle Hamilton, most people couldn't name the players that were on <laughs> the defense of the Baltimore Ravens. And one of those players who Justin Mubalaki, I can never, that's the one name I cannot pronounce, got a, got a $96 million contract after one great year playing on the line. So <laughs> I, overall, I'm actually, I'm like, sort of the, I believe that the Butch Berry effect of Anthony Weaver on the defense, it's going to, it's going to show itself really, really quickly. So I'm okay with going to going hard in the draft for your line. That's where you I, I would really focus at the beginning, if you could, either an edge rusher or defensive line. And but what do you think with the Bedino Joneses and the group that we brought in? What are your thoughts so far on it? I would say you need to still need a nose tackle. I agree with Deshaun. Yeah, but Benito Jones can play nose tackle, and Deshaun Han can play nose tackle. Okay, I understand that, but they didn't bring them in. See, of course, that, that's you said. You hold on. You said you were a little confused on what they're doing. Or I still right? am, but that's okay. Hold on. With you said you were a little, little confused on what they're doing because they weren't picking anybody up. And I'm about to tell you, all all they've been doing is what they're supposed to do: situational placement. They knew last year they had no depth. And so far, Miami has gone out and added a whole bunch of depth in all different places. Now, the draft and then uh, post-June 1 is going to come. And when that happens, they're going to pick up the rest of those star players you're looking for. Uh, I see them uh, picking up at yeah. least two or three starters in the draft yeah. this year. They better. They better. Um, for me, I focus more on the confusion of if you're bringing a star player in for a visit, don't let him leave. But yeah, I would I would definitely look at Calais Campbell. Um, Unless he wants too much. Yeah. The one player I find so funny <laughs> to make you laugh, the one player who I think just my, Chris Greer should go get him and over even if he has to overpay for him just for the pure fodder of it is Jadavian Clowney. Why? He has tried to get Jadavian Clowney Three times. Three times, and he struck out all three. Javian Clowney was on the Ravens last year, played with Anthony Weaver, was great for the Ravens. He's great wherever he goes. He always likes to try a new contract. He's always on these one-year deals. But for some reason, we haven't been able to nab him. I just don't know. Does he not like Miami? I don't know. Because it's very funny that we've tried to get him three times, and we've struck out all three times. And he's got to hey, and I, I've... Time. I have met players from other teams that can't stand Miami because of something a fan or somebody has done previously oh, to God. them. So they hold the grudge, you know. Our fans seen, are pretty petty. 
I've seen that more than once. So, you know, it's just the way, the way it is. If, what did Barry Cunningham say about that player that he dislikes him so much? <laughs> I'm just teasing. No, because honestly, between him and TD fans, I go, like, talk about negativity, life. But that's realisticness, right? It's realistic. Now, let's switch over to the offensive line. How are – do you feel better right now than – do you feel better now than you did last year heading into the draft with your the depth of your offensive line. Yes. Why? Why? Because I know they need to draft one or two offensive guards. That wasn't my question. <laughs> my question is going into the draft, yes. the current depth on the offensive line, yes. you feel better about the players we have on the roster now versus the players we had on the roster last year when Chris Greer said, Steve Malloy's favorite video, that you're more concerned about the line than we are, are yeah. you comfortable with Teron Armstead, starting ta left tackle, Austin Jackson, now we know he's going to start writing right tackle, Aaron Brewer, capable of playing center or guard, Robert Jones is back, Liam Eichenberg is back, the, uh, they brought in uh, Jack Driscoll, uh, they, they're bringing in, they have a lot, they have a lot more overall depth Yeah, I players. feel good. I, I still stand by what I said. I feel good compared to last year because last year they didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you asked me to compare yeah. it to was last okay. year. Okay. And they didn't do anything last year. At least they've done something this year. Yeah. Um, I have, I already made my prediction of it, so I'll remind people. Does Connor retire or do you think – does he come back he, to the NFL? And if he, he does – he, he got hurt. He's something wrong. But it's with an extended it. injury. But I, my prediction is, Hank, he yeah. will be a Miami Dolphin. Hmm. I think he'll be back. I'd be surprised, to be he's honest. Drew Rosenhaus guy, he'll be back. If they not, if they draft somebody like JPJ in the, I would. Why? Because Connor Williams could still play left guard, and then you could put Brewer at right guard, and you could put JPJ at center. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah but anyways oh, okay tight end where are you right now heading into the draft yep. do we have to draft the tight end or are you content with John U. Smith, Durham Smythe Tanner Connor who you predicted would get 15 touchdowns last season and Julian Hill I haven't forgotten that <sighs> well you don't have to keep rubbing it in it's funny all right. Um, Miami needs to draft a tight end. But, Hank, you think they're going to draft an O-lineman, a, li a, a defensive end, a, a, a wide receiver? A, how are they going to draft all these positions? In the five, They have five picks. Like I said, they have to, dra they have to trade back on 21. You trade want back on 21, pick up two to three picks. That's what you do. But then you won't get any of the player, the star players you want that are at the beginning of the draft. Sure, you will. You won't get JPJ. Nope. You won't get Brian Thomas. Nope. You won't get Brock Bowers. Nope. You're probably you're not going to get most of those anyway. You're not going to get Sweat. You'll get Sweat. You get you'll get Devondre Sweat if you back up to 28, 27, 28? You back up to the second round, you'll get Sweat. And you'd be content with him as your first pick? I'd be content with him as my first pick. He just needs to go to conditioning. Okay. 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 Because let me tell you, you want somebody to push the pile. That boy can push the pile, man. Yes, he can. He's big. He's big. He is big. And, you know, he seemed a bit out of shape when the, he was doing his training and all that. So Miami has a conditioning program. Not a problem. Somebody like that, you take some of that weight off him, forget about it. Okay, He's going to become a beast, whoever okay. he plays for. Okay. Running back. They're, okay, uh, no. I'd like no, to no, have no, no, I haven't got, I haven't asked the question yet. Oh. You know, the, the, they're bringing the band back together. Three, again, they're bringing Mostert, they're bringing mm -hmm. A-Chain, they're bringing Brooks, and they're bringing restructuring Jeff Wilson. Yep. Are they drafting a running back, or is it the same old band, same old spiel, 
We're going to have a phenomenal running attack that doesn't get used when it needs to be used because not one of those players is Mike McDaniel ever going to trust on third and one and fourth and one, along with Alec Ingold, and it's going to be the same bull crap where your buddy Finn Stanza, Mr. Positive Bandwagon, is going to be watching a game that's going to be third and one and fourth and one, and Mike McDaniel is literally going to give me a freaking heart attack while I watch him throw two stupid bubble screens with the Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, where they're going to get pounded and lose a couple yards, and we're going to turn over the ball, or we're going to punt. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. How am I wrong? <clears throat> You're wrong in a lot of ways. So tell me I don't why wanna, I'm wrong. I don't want to sit here and cut your legs out from under you. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you really think that's what's going to happen? Two years in a row. I, I, you know. I look at it this way because you never asked me the real question about the running back. So I'm going to answer my own running back question. First off, we need a big back. You need to stop playing with the fullbacks. J.K. Dobbins. Stop, stop playing with the fullbacks. And like you just said, bring in J.K. Dobbins. I don't know if they will. Because right now, if I was them. You don't need the fullback. No. You don't need a fullback. I love Al- Alec Ingold, but you don't need a fullback in today's Al- Alec Ingold offense. has been Alec Ingold has done one good thing over the last three years of his NFL career. He's jumped over players. He, that's the only reason why people like him is that he tries to jump and hurdle players. That's all he does. That's all he does. He doesn't block very well. Our running backs don't block very well. I'm concerned no, at the running back position. Bring a not big back they can't in. Run. Not because they you're, can't run. They're your answer is not in. at running back, though. It's at it's at fullback. Fullback. Yeah. But the Get running rid back of him. position. But the running back position, it will never be utilized properly by this dimwit, this IT administrator, who I like as a friend, but I would never hire him as my head coach. There's a lot of people I know who I'm close with, who are my friends. Doesn't mean I would hire them to do things for me. That's Mike McDaniel. He doesn't know how to. He, I'll put it to you this way. He would blow your transmission on your Corvette within five <laughs> seconds. Because he would put so much pressure on it to try to. to he would try to get to zero to 60 in under one second by using Tyra Kill and Jalen Waddle. Versus <laughs> easing it in with his running game, then speed picking up speed. He wants to get to 60 before he gets to 20. You like my analogy there? Yeah. By the way, hey. see, it wasn't just me, buddy. It wasn't just me who came after you. Take a look Nobody at that. said this year. Nobody said this year, Steve. <laughs> that was last year. <laughs> Guys, we were... Uh, 38 minutes into the show. It's not going to be a long show tonight unless you got someone raises their hand in the chat and says, I want to talk. I have questions to ask, and we'll drop the link, and we'll give you guys a chance to uh, to talk for a few minutes. Um, What's up, so Hank, so, Hank, the last position we haven't spoken about is Tua Tagovailoa, who his biggest promoter, Nick Tix, is saying he, now he's working on losing weight because last year – it looked like he, the guy had sandbags around his ankles. He, If he had to redo the combine last year, his 40 would probably have been eight seconds. That's how slow Tua Tagovailoa was when he ran for the – when he ran. It was pretty <laughs> ridiculous. Right now, you see in the NFL, the Seahawks went to get Sam Howell. The 49ers went to get Josh Dobbs. Yep. The, uh, the Rams now have Jimmy Garoppolo. Yep. Jalen Hurts now has um, Kenny Pickett. Mm -hmm. The Steelers now have a combination of Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. You have have teams that have a lot of really good backups to back up their players, the people who can go in and replace them and keep us sane. Right now, how concerned are you about the backup quarterback position? Would you still – or would you, at this point – they're not going to go sign a veteran at this point. 
because Mike White's under contract. I doubt they're going to cut him. Would you go draft a fourth quarterback to, 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 to basically question whether or not they are better than Skylar Thompson or um, um, or uh, Mike Mike White, meaning that in the third round, if the, if the or what, what, not, they don't have a position in the third round, but let's say they have it in the fifth round. There's a quarterback that's capable, that did well in college, who fell, who's out there, who's good. Would you go draft them, or are you just basically saying live or die with Tua Tagovailoa? I would take it. It's simple. Seventh round, sixth round, I'd take a shot on Joe Milton. That's what I'd do. I'd stick him in our side pocket, have him train in the facility, <laughs> see how he does. Tua looks like a kid chasing an ice cream truck. It's not that fast, but enough to catch it. <laughs> yeah, Pam. It's all, the quarterback position is all over the place. Like I personally think, and we're going to talk about it actually when it ties to the Dolphins right now in a few minutes. But well, we already know Skyler's not it. So, Skyler's not it, and Mike White's he's not, not it. it. No, we know he's, he's not it. it. So no. bring somebody in. So it's not a matter of having four quarterbacks again. He's still going to have three. Just get rid of Skyler because you don't need him. Trade him. Or you somewhere. can cut, you can cut Mike White. Yeah, you can cut Mike White too. Either way, you know neither one of them are the one that you really want. So yeah. if somebody just falls in your lap, like say they like Bo Nix and he falls in their lap at say thirty three somewhere, they trade back. They're sitting at thirty three and Bo Nix falls in their lap and they go, you know what? This is the backup we need. We've been waiting on this. Grab them if that's who they think it should be, you know? Okay. Um, I haven't asked you this question because we it only came up after – I didn't bring it up last week because there was a lot going on. Um, and we'll talk about the draft, spent the Rattler and all that. To a tug of Iloa, what – we know he's going to get a contract. Yeah. When do you think the contract will happen? What, what would you accept as a reasonable contract? And but and what do you expect to, the contract to be? So it's a threefold. When will it happen? What do you think it should be? But then what do you expect it to be, including the guaranteed money? Okay. What I... When do you think it will happen first? When I think it will happen, um, I think it'll happen after the draft. I think that's when he'll sign them is after the draft, after they get everybody in place and get everybody done. Sign then they'll everything. then they'll work his deal. Yeah. Okay. How much um, would you give him? How much would I give him? How much would you give him for how long? How much guaranteed? Knowing the market, obviously, be reasonable. And then, but in the end, what do you think Chris Rear is going to give him? I would give him around thirty million a year. For how many years? For four years. How much guaranteed? That's only one hundred twenty million. <laughs> hey, you asked. I know. Um, you'd have to have an incentive laid because. What do you think will happen then? Because that's not going to happen. Will happen? I think he's going to get around fifty plus million. And he'll wind up getting around what 100 or 200 guaranteed. No, yeah, I think it's gonna end up being a four year deal for 220 million dollars, 125 million guaranteed. I just, yeah, I think it's gonna be about that. I think it just that sounds gonna... that sounds about right. That's almost that's right around the 50 yeah. million a year. Yeah. I said he's gonna get 55 million a year. And they're gonna, and then he's gonna get a lot. He's gonna get one, half of it, just over sixty, almost sixty percent, fifty something percent guaranteed. And they're gonna just take a flaw. And I think just, and then Mike McDaniel, and and by the way, in two years from now, that's still if he's playing decent football, even yeah. if they don't want that contract anymore, it will be a movable contract because the cap's only going up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the draft. Okay. Last topic of the night: the draft as we stand right now. Who do you want the position to be? If you had your dream scenario. Yeah. First pick. First what pick. What would happen? And what would you want to happen? And what do you think will happen? 
Okay. My first pick for the Miami Dolphins, what would I want to happen? I would want them to trade back. That's what I would want to happen. Okay. Um, what, do I, what was the next question? What do you think will happen? What do I think will happen? They'll pick two players. They'll pick a player at 21 and 55, and they'll sit there and let the whole draft pass them by. And they'll pick again at 158. Um, uh, Herbert's making right now his cap hit's only like 40, but he's making in the mid 50s, like 55. Um, what um, what position? If you were to stay at 21, yeah. What 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 players would mm-hmm. hold you back? We know what what are the who are the players you see in the first round that you are saying I'll be okay. If they stay yeah. at 21, I will be happy to wait till 55 if they take 21. Who are the players? I have three. Who are your three or two? I have Chop Robinson, JPJ, and I had a defensive tackle in mind. Braden Fist? Johnny Newton. Johnny yeah. Newton's around 21, so I would probably – I think Johnny Newton would be – probably be there still so i would probably go with johnny newton yeah for me uh i would there's three players jpj brian thomas jr and brock bowers if those if those three players are not there trade back i don't care to Swift, swaft I, I you'll get a player 28 32 33 the, because the neighbors the matt harris like all the great players all all the great alignment if jpj brock ba- if those just start to fall those are my yeah. three. Besides that, trade back. I want picks. I don't want to be doing the draft show, and then we're literally not talking about anything on the second day for the first four hours. <laughs> I'm convinced. Don't, don't I'm, have a show for the first four know, hours I'm, then. I'm convinced, though, by the way, um, yeah. that they're going to end up taking a, a, a defender. Uh, they're going to end up taking a defensive end. Um, and, over, and then I think they're going to go too early. Uh, we're going to end up reaching for some stupid reason versus taking BPA. I'm convinced the stupidity of the Miami Dolphins and their drafting. Um, and I and I'll be fresh it. And I do not be surprised. Do not be surprised. And I am going to. I said this. I say as a joke all the time. Don't be surprised if they take a corner or a safety. I'm not kidding. This guy is obsessed with it. Chris Greer. He's he likes his corners. He likes his well, safety. Let me let me read something to you here real okay. quick, okay? Take your time. These these are the players that are available if we trade back around 30 or you so. You think will be okay. available. They're on the big board at that. Okay. But remember, I, I Jack Campbell. I, I'm not changing the big board. It's just how it's set yeah. up. But remember, Jack Campbell was in the was in the 40s. He went 18. Yeah, for the Lions. I'm just saying I have yeah, yeah. to go by what I have. Um, here's the names: Bo Nix, quarterback; Graham yeah. Barton, offensive guard; Donnie okay. Mitchell, wide receiver; Xavier Worthy, wide receiver; Michael Penix, quarterback; Kingsley Sumatia, offensive tackle out of BYU. Man is a beast. He is a beast. Jordan Morgan, OT. Christian Hayes, OG. Tyler Newbin, one of the best safeties out there. He's available. Edge rushers. You you have Devontae Sweat at 41. Trotter. You have Lad McConkey. I mean, I mean, these these aren't crap names. These are starters. What would your reaction be? I just want to know what would have to Dolphins Twitter if at 55. They took an Eichenberg. Oh. Imagine they took an Eichenberg. By the way, by the way the, that Eichenberg in college right now is a better player than his brother. Yeah. Well, he's on the big board around 170-something. Yeah. Okay. By the way, Barton, so if they way, take him at 55, I'd be pissed. <laughs> I know. By the way, Barton, by the way, is a guy who's in a lot of people's mock drafts. He's in Mel Kuyper's yes. mock draft. He's in Daniel Jeremiah's right draft, but do yep. I find 21, it's too high. 
What are your thoughts if we took Bar- what would happen if we took Barton at twenty one? You'd be pissed because we went to we could have we didn't have we could have traded back. No, I wouldn't be pissed. That would mean that they know something that I didn't about JPJ and all those other no, guys. No, but if JPJ, with- if I'm convinced JPJ, Howie Roseman, where where are the Eagles in the draft? I think they're in the mid twenties. I think they don't think. Do they have a pick? Where, where, where are the Eagles' draft position? What is I'm not position? sure. I'm gonna look. Draft position. It's not before us. No, I just want to know. First round number. Oh, 22. Yeah, right after us. I see them. If JPJ is there at 18, at 19, and with the 20th pick at 19, and with the 20th pick, the play, he's not there yet. I bet you. The Eagles jump the Miami Dolphins and take Jackson Powers Johnson. I am not kidding. I so see Howie Roseman hurting his good friend, Chris Greer. And on that moment, my, everyone on Dolphins Twitter and on our live show will be saying, fire Chris Greer. You got duped by Howie Roseman again. So I'm <laughs> telling you, let me ask you, if JPJ is there, at 20, yes. and you see at 20, he's there. Would you move up one spot to go get him? No. You wouldn't give up a fifth round. You wouldn't give up one of your picks next year. You have lots of competitory picks to go get JPJ and solidify your center position for the next 10 years? Mm-mm. Okay. No. No. Because I got Frazier. Frazier's on the big board around 40. Okay. So if I really want another center, I can get him. He's he's no JPJ. I'm not I'm not gonna say he is, but the what the cost would be too high. Cost okay. would probably be too high, and we have what five draft picks right now. Okay. That's 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 not enough to get the job done as it yeah. is. Yeah, okay, I got it. Sounds good. Right. I'm a draft guy. I, I, I'm I love about, it too. I'm all about get in the draft and and build your team through the draft. Yeah. And I'm about knowing your pockets, knowing your picks, you know, know your pockets where you're going to have a, a pick or two, a few picks, and know who's going to be on the board. Have a good sense of what's going on, for crying out loud. It seems like sometimes when Miami goes into the, the draft, it's, it's almost like they have no plan half the time. So... Uh, I just hope it all works out this, this year. You know, I, I have faith. I, I'm keeping the faith so far. So we'll see. Greer's let me down so far on the offensive line, but we'll see. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> that's all I have for today. I, we went through every position. We asked a lot of good questions. We have great people and Scotty and Daniel and Ralph and Hunter and Hammer Time and Steve Malloy. You know, I, I have I don't have anything nice things to say about Courtney or Dolphins Thirsty or Bobby <laughs> Melendez or Alex Pachiska or Josh Wingate or Brett Legasse. Right now, the MVP of the Fence Talk Sports Network is Steve Malloy because he shows up to our shows. I show up to their shows. They don't show up to mine. They are off the bandwagon till they appear on the show next Thursday. You can share it with your friends, your family, your neighbors. Okay. Evan, I'm I'm horrible at showing up for other people's shows. I'm but you, horrible but, but you have an excuse. Okay, you're related to me, so by by can by osmosis. pure by pure osmosis, you're with me. All good. <laughs> okay. Anyways, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out Caneswear for to, for all your dolphin. Panthers who are doing phenomenally well in the state of Florida right now. Inter Miami, my the U, uh, the Marlins. Uh, the heat uh go check them out it's all a really a great stuff great show on surf hopefully we'll be a little better next year um and we can actually appreciate those uh all that great uh paraphernalia uh but don't forget to like and subscribe you're going to catch fish tank Hank, i'm sure this saturday with bobby melendez on the uh, bobby fins talk on fins talk today we have a lot of great content we have on the clock we have Real Talk Fizz Talk. We have our fantasy show. We have our baseball show tomorrow. Uh, we have a lot of great stuff going on. We have our wrestling show. We have a lot of stuff going on. You'll see us again on the bandwagon next Thursday, 8 p.m. I don't have anything happening anymore at Thursday at 8 p.m., so you're going to catch us here on a regular basis unless some crazy urgency 
happens. Hank, any final words for the people? Thanks for tuning in. Without you, there's no us. We appreciate everybody. Absolutely. Guys, like, subscribe, and always, fins up. Hey, Miami sports fans.